Hey, this is Artober in Montgomery, and we are here with Jennifer Jankowskis, uh, the curator of the Sculptural Garden. And uh, I just want to ask, uh, how did the Cadel Sculptural Garden come about? Well, the Cadel Sculpture Garden came about many years ago. I, I think it was a dream of our former director, Mark Johnson. You know, we sit in such a wonderful park but we wanted to have an area that we could have sculpture and keep it protected at the same time. And so we needed to actually create something that could do that. Uh, he, in his last few years, really focused his energy on bringing this together and put together a sculpture garden committee. And they helped realize his dream. We brought in architect Jim Bargainer, who's worked on every aspect of the museum and all of our expansions. And he came up with this wonderful design. And then we brought in another great uh, designer, Fairley Reinhardt, who worked on all of the landscape. So it was a very collaborative effort between members of our board, people in the community, the vision of Mark Johnson, and that was followed through with um, our current director, Angie, with it kind of last bits and pieces when it, she already, uh, when she arrived, and of course, our interim director, Ed Bridges, who kind of shepherded the project in its last stages. Okay. Um, who are Joyce and John Cadell? The Cadells are actually really wonderful philanthropists, and they've been supporting areas in Montgomery from the Shakespeare Festival, which the Cadell company actually helped build. He is the or was, he's retired now, but uh, he had the company Cadell Construction, which builds embassies and all sorts of things around the world, but has always been committed to Montgomery. And he and his former wife, unfortunately, Joyce passed away a few years ago, has been great supporters and benefactors of the museum and especially the garden, as well as other cultural institutions around town. So the sculptures change out, how often are they planned to change or how often do they change? Well, we've always thought of the garden as a outdoor gallery space. So we do change out sculptures. We have a few pieces that are permanently on view that are part of our collection, but most of them change out anywhere between a year and two years. So um, we have things that range, you know, from a year, 18 months, two years, sometimes a little bit longer. We're always trying to bring in fresh, fresh new voices and new sculptures so that our visitors, as they come back, can enjoy something new. So there's actually uh, quite a few pieces that are, are due to change out now. Which one are you going to be saddest to see go? Well, we have three pieces leaving. And you know, it's funny because it's always so exciting when new pieces come in. And for as much as I love all the works, I couldn't really say that I have a favorite. It's just I'm looking forward to the new pieces coming. We have two new works coming. They will be here in the next couple weeks. So starting in the middle of October, they will be on view for people to see along with what's already in the garden. We have a sculpture by Joan Laplenza, who is originally from Spain, and he is an internationally renowned artist, and also Shakaya Booker, who uh, lives and works in both New York and Pennsylvania. We're real excited to have her. She's also a very well-respected artist. So uh, when can people come and view the sculptures? Well, our garden is now open, so we come in and visit us anytime during our normal operational hours. And that is posted on our website if you want to check which day works for you, what hours were open. And we welcome everyone. And you can see all the sculptures on view. We'll be rotating things out in the middle of October, so if you uh, See, you may even see us doing a little bit of installation. What can you tell me about the piece that's behind you? This work is called Rough and Tumble, and it's by North Carolina-based artist Patrick Doherty. And what's really wonderful about this piece are two things, really. One, that it shows what you can make out of just regular materials. As you look at it, you can see that it's all created by sticks. The other thing that's so interesting about this piece is that it was created by sticks that were gathered by lots of people in our community. It was a very collaborative work of art. We must have had almost 100 volunteers that worked with Patrick and our team here at the museum to gather materials, strip these sticks of leaves, and actually help weave it all together. So it's all woven together and it's an interactive piece. You can actually walk into each of these pyramids 
And these pyramids are based on um, the Nubian pyramids. They're not Egyptian pyramids, but uh, he took that as inspiration and created a new work that you can see is somewhat whimsical and playful. They're kind of tapsy and turvy. Um, and you know, again, we invite people to come in and actually walk into the sculpture. Hi, this is Alice Novak uh, with the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about the kinds of activities that are available right now. But first off, uh, how much of the collection is viewable online? Well, thank you for asking, Amy. We have a new website and a new collection site. I've been working really hard to make the works in the museum accessible and visitor friendly for people online. And you can see almost all of our collection that way. And we will continue to add more information, more images, making our collection available to the world. Do you have a favorite piece? My favorite piece in the museum's collection? Yes. Yes. It's a stained glass window. It really resonates with me because it shows a quilt and quilting is the sort of original Alabama art form that everyone did, whether they were black or white, rich or poor, handed down through generations of women. And this quilt is not the subject of the work. The subject is stars falling on Alabama. Uh, but this quilt that we see there that resonates with me so much also has vignettes of other works in our collection. So you might see a painting of a fish on the wall and then a little square with that fish in it or some leaves in a garden. And so it, it, it's just, it's Alabama, it's Montgomery, it's a black cultural park, it's Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, it's, it's everything we are. Okay, so the museum is closed right now. What kind of activities do you offer right now? So the Sculpture Garden, of course, is open and you can come out uh, Tuesdays through Sundays. We have a lot of virtual programs like we were talking about too. And when you come to the Sculpture Garden, you can listen to the artists. For example, the pyramids behind us that Jennifer was talking about, you can listen to the artist, Patrick Doherty, sharing with us his experience here. You can do a scavenger hunt called Who Am I? where you try to figure out the works of art. But if you would like to join us for our virtual programs, I'm going to tell you about five programs that we have coming up soon. One is called Authority Figures. It's a creative conversation and that means an interview style discussion in this case about African art and sort of symbols and governance. That's October 28th. And then on October 31st, that this Saturday, we have Artists Plus Activism. That is a program about contemporary issues and how artists express them. And we really are focusing on the vote as we approach the election and imagery of civic engagement. We also have on November 7th, Backyard Botanical Art, where you can hear from Laura Bokwin in this garden talking about making a print that captures the essence of fall. And on November 11th, we have the reading group, which of course you are our partner in. Yes, I am. And I really look forward to hearing from you later this year about back to quilts, um, symbols <laughs> representing the Underground Railroad. But on November 11th, we're going to hear about Gifts, a novel about Anne Goldthwaite. And you're asking about our collection. We have thousands of works by Anne Goldthwaite. Uh, she's a very significant Alabama artist who traveled to Paris at a time when many young women from Alabama didn't have the independence, the support, the nerve to go be an artist in Paris. She was shown in the Armory Show in 1913 in New York. Again, a woman from Alabama uh, breaking glass ceilings on both sides of the Atlantic. So you can visit us for that program. And on November 14th, we have Local Artists Live where we visit artist studios. We've been doing it every other Saturday during the pandemic. And in this case, we'll be going to see Winfred Hawkins about his graphic works. And what do you think about Winfred's work? Oh, I love Winfred. Like uh, his murals are all starting to pop up over the city and I'm just, I'm so into it. I just interviewed uh, Kevin King about the 1413 Oak Street mural. It's, it's great, I love it. Well, we're excited to hear from him. Yeah. All right. And uh, he's also one of my favorite people. So, you know, there's, I'm, I'm partial. 
Uh, it's gonna be a fun program. We don't want anyone to miss it. Yeah, he's goofy. He's fun. <laughs> All right. So in line with that, and this is a hard question, do you have a favorite local artist? Well, thank you for asking. I'm so excited about Montgomery's arts community right now for so many reasons. There's so much energy. There's so many creators here. We've always had an art scene that surprised people for a community of this size. But what I'm really excited about right now is the Black Lives Matter mural around the Court Square Fountain. To live in a city and have this mural at the site of slave auction and to have had our local artists do this. You know, there, there are Black Lives Matter murals in so many cities around the country, but it sort of feels like um, it's Mayor Bowser's mural in DC or it's Mayor de Blasio's mural in New York. But in Montgomery, it feels like it is our artist mural. We all know Kevin King. We all know Kalanji Gilchrist. We all know Michelle Browder. I know you've been talking to all of them. And we, we know these people. We love these people who created this mural with our mayor's blessing. And um, it was just so exciting to see that go up on the Juneteenth Eve. And again, represents everyone we are as a city and, and I think our city arts community right now in a, in a way that I'm so proud of.